The lush marshes of southern Iraq were once a vital source of life and nourishment for Iraqis. But the wetlands are suffering from shockingly low water levels, part of a widespread water crisis impacting the entire country. Low water and high salt levels are killing plant life and the water buffalo that Iraqis depend on to survive. Special correspondent Jane Ferguson was recently in southern Iraq, and as she reports, water has become a rare commodity in the country. Few people look out on these marshes with as much love and concern as Jassim al-Assadi. He has dedicated his life to preserving them. I born in here in the middle of the marshes. I born in the, in the central marsh. And when I opened my eyes in that time, I opened my eyes for for a garden, he was adding again, adding, adding. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a wide area for, 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 for water, uh, plant, uh, uh, buffalo, uh, uh, fish. In that time, the fish in everywhere around, around our houses. These ancient Iraqi wetlands are believed to have been the Garden of Eden in the Bible. They have sustained human life here for thousands of years, stretching on for miles and miles, a precious UNESCO World Heritage Site. But they shouldn't look like this. Yellowy brown reeds are a sign of the plant life dying. These are the same marshes filmed just four years ago. It's not normal, historical, in every way of the marshes. The water is suitable for the, for the buffalo. Yeah. But in seasons, in years, Drought years, like this year, like the year of 2015, 2009, there is a problem for the uh, water. There is a problem for the quality of water and also for, for the quantity of water. As you see, you see, you see this area, it is yeah. drained completely. Before, four months ago, it is, it is all of this area reflected with water. In that time, because the level of the Euphrates is higher, now the level of Euphrates go down by 84 centimeters. Wow. Yes. The marshes of southern Iraq are suffering from low water levels, down 17 inches, and it's a part of the widespread water crisis spanning the entire country. Water levels in the life-giving Tigris and Euphrates rivers have plummeted. The problem is that the water isn't just low, it's also too salty. According to Al-Assadi, the reduced volume of water has caused salination to spike from 200 parts per million, as it was when he was a child here, to 1,800 parts per million today. That means the water is not only killing the plant life, but also the water buffalo people here depend on. These cows provide cheese, milk, and meat to eat. For thousands of years, they simply drank the water all around them. But now it has become too salty and toxic for the buffalo, blinding them before they die. We met buffalo herder Abbas Jawad collecting water from one of the remaining few healthy parts of the marsh. From here, he will carry the water miles to his herd. He has lost 15 buffalo in the last year to the salty water. All of this used to be green, and now it is almost a desert. Last year, we had water, but this year there is none at all. You can see that with your own eyes. Entire villages have been abandoned, as life for the herders becomes too hard to bear. The land simply cannot sustain them. Our livelihood is water. We just need the water. If our herds die, we will starve. Zahara is just 15 and has never been to school, but she understands the politics behind her community's struggles. They stopped the flow of the water from Turkey. They want oil in exchange for water. The Iraqi government refused to give them the oil, and we are the ones who suffer. She is referring to the Ilisu Dam, a massive, newly constructed dam upstream along the Tigris River across the border in Turkey, part of a massive 22-dam project. Ilisu Dam went into operation this summer, and water levels downstream in Iraq immediately plummeted. Around 70 percent of Iraq's water flows from neighboring countries like Iran and Turkey. Iraq's Minister for Water Resources, Hassan al Janabi, says the dams upstream in those neighboring nations only add to the effects of climate change. It's tough uh, to quantify, but I would, uh, I would say that the climate change impact is 
is, is, is felt, is visible, but uh, the control uh, by the upstream uh, countries, the dams in, in, in Turkey, Iran, and Syria, is, uh, is more visible. So and on, the Tag on the Euphrates River, for example, we lost something like 55 to 60 percent of our of the average um, annual flow to our country. Dams don't just lower the water levels, they prevent the natural ancient patterns of water in Iraq. The ebb and flow of dry seasons and floods year after year. Snow melt in spring, scarcity at other times, is how agriculture began here and sustained humans for thousands of years, making the land that runs between the Tigris and Euphrates part of the legendary Fertile Crescent. So we know that during springtime, we have the peak uh, um, inflows to our country. In summertime, we have less water. And, but this, over the history, we, we know that just like predictable behavior of the river system. Now, when you build major dams on the upstream, so you lose this peak, this excess of water gets stored. So we don't have this peak during springtime. So you lose uh, everything that is dependent on the cycle of. Uh, of flow, biodiversity, uh, floods, uh, you know, this uh, um, renewal of fertility of the soil. Already, farmers are being driven from the land in Iraq. In the northern province of Nineveh, wheat farmers struggle to keep their crops alive in parched, dry earth. Farmer Sami Yesi says his wheat fields are failing. <laughs> Last year, I planted 175 acres, but this year, I could not. I planted only 125. It cost me around 40 million Iraqi dinars. The rain fell late and the crops failed. If this situation continues, we cannot plant. If this situation remains the same next year, we will not be able to. Even if farmers are able to nurture crops, the Iraqi government has cut wheat production by 50 percent and banned planting rice because both crops use so much water for cultivation. In the short term, that may preserve water, but in the long term, it could drive millions of Iraqis dependent on agriculture from the land, turning swathes of this once fertile Mesopotamian basin into an uninhabitable dust bowl. The desert is expanding, and with this expansion of desert, uh, this means poverty, displacement, uh, irreversible uh, change in the land. You cannot get people back, even the conditions in the country, assuming the conditions in the country uh, are um, you know, ripe for them to support them and get them back. It won't happen. It's not that easy. Meanwhile, Iraq has turned from a country that once exported food to one increasingly dependent on imports. As water becomes a rare commodity here, the price of food will increase. In the place known as the cradle of civilization, life here will become more precarious. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jane Ferguson in Nasiriyah, Iraq.